I have lied to you. I have to come clean. Water is not 800 times more dense than cut, air. Cut, cut, cut. What are you doing here? Get out of my video. You've been telling them water is 800 times more dense than air since the beginning. But I have to tell them the truth. They can't handle the truth. But I owe it to no. them. I owe it to you. So back off and go swim 10 200s fly. In this video, I'm gonna share exactly why it's so important to understand the density of water and using this information so that you can swim faster and smarter than ever before. Then at the end of the video, I'm actually going to reveal the true difference in density between water and air. Now, when I said that I have lied to you and I haven't been telling the truth about how dense water is compared to air, what I really meant to say is that I was overgeneralizing a complex concept. And in this video, I did a ton of research and I'm gonna break down the science and physics for you so that you can understand exactly how to swim faster. But first, we really need to dive into why this matters. Now, swimming is really hard. And it's hard because we know that the water is this thick substance that we have to swim with. Now, not all of us are lucky or unlucky enough as Nathan Adrian to swim through syrup. But if you've had the experience of going for a swim, which is probably why you're watching this video, you know just how tiring it can be to move through the water over time. Now I've said it before and I say it again on this channel, there's only two ways to get faster at swimming. Number one, you can decrease drag, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. And number two, you can increase propulsion, which at the same time, if you understand the physics of water, you can actually leverage it to your advantage to increase your propulsion. Now let's talk about decreasing drag first. And my beautiful illustration I have up here, I have two red bars, and they signify two different, call it amplitudes or distance, from the bottom to the top, one bar is larger than the other. Now this represents the total amount of frontal drag that the swimmer is creating. Now it's blown up for effect, of course, as an illustration, but work with me. The larger bar is creating more resistance. So if we understand just how dense water is, and we understand that if we want to get faster, we need to decrease the total amount of frontal drag that we have in the water. I made another video that talks about drag and how you reduce drag, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already. But fundamentally, we are trying to move through the water in a more streamlined pattern. The more streamlined we can be, the faster that we're gonna go. Now, of course, this medium of water plays a big factor because, I mean, if you've ever been swimming in the open water and salt water, you feel more buoyant. You're actually swimming higher in the water, and that has to do with the density of the water. By the flip of the coin, you can actually increase your propulsion by understanding the differences in density of which you're trying to pull. So let's break that down a little bit and we'll, we'll put some application. So the density of water and even air changes based on a few different factors. So it can change based on temperature. This is why when you see icebergs floating out in the water, the ice, which is just water frozen, is actually above the water. Now most of the iceberg is actually under the water, but you get what I'm saying. The ice doesn't sink to the bottom and that has to do with the difference in density. Same thing based on medium. So as you change the substance composition of the water, salt or other elements in the water can actually change that. So you feel more buoyant in salt water because the density of the water it's thicker and therefore your body feels higher in the water because you are less dense in the salt water relative to pool water. We'll talk about the differences in just a little bit. Another thing that can change the density of water is the depth. And this works in the inverse when we're talking about air. So as you change in altitude, you actually will decrease how dense the air is. The air is less dense the further you go up, and the inverse is true when you go underwater. So the deeper you go, the denser it is. Imagine if you go scuba diving, you feel the pressure because the water Water is just being compacted and it's more dense per unit of volume. Now it's really important to understand the equation of density so that you understand the variables that make it up. So density is represented by this P symbol, which is called naught, and that is equal to mass divided by volume with the respective measurement for each of those. Now let's break down the density of water and the density of air and we'll see if this 800 times holds up. So water density is equal to one gram 
per milliliter. But in fact, it's not actually one gram per milliliter, and this is where we can run into trouble because it is in fact 0.998395. I know you might be looking at that and you're like, well, let's round up close enough, but it does make a difference. And when we talk about a few different examples, you're gonna see just how big of a difference that can make. The other factor here is that this is average at four degrees Celsius, which is about 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you're thinking in your head, wait a second, there's no way in heck I can swim in four degrees Celsius water. So the density of water is actually not one gram per milliliter. But this is what's used in the industry, and if you just Google it, this is probably the number that you're gonna see, but it's not 100% accurate, but let's hold that thought for a second. Let's talk about the air density. Let's break down air density and we're gonna compare them. So remember, air is made up of a few different things. We have nitrogen, our N2, it's about 21% oxygen, and then 1%, a whole mix of other gases and other stuff floating in the air. That could be argon, helium, CO2, carbon dioxide, neon, and a whole bunch of other stuff. The composition of air at 15 degrees Celsius at sea level, remember pressure with depth, that's 59 degrees Fahrenheit, is 0.00125 grams per ml. So because these units are the same, I did the math for you guys, if we just take the density of water and we divide by the density of air, you can do this at home. Grab your iPhone, grab your Android, get the calculator out, take one and divide it by 0 .00125. And the number may or may not surprise you, and it is in fact 800 times. So yes, water is 800 times more dense than air. No, wrong, that is incorrect, because remember, you can't swim in water that is 39 degrees. And what happens if we're swimming in salt water? What happens if we're swimming in a pool at sea level? How about a pool at elevation? And what if just for fun, we were to swim at the top of Mount Everest? Let's really break it down. If you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure you subscribe because I did all the math for you guys. Let's have some fun. So let's go ahead and put some real numbers here. Let's imagine we're swimming in a pool. The water temperature is 26.1 degrees Celsius, which is 79 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the standard pool temperature. The water density at this temperature at sea level is 0.99676. Now remember, when we were doing the density of water, we were looking at four degrees Celsius. So this is a much colder environment. So we should suspect that at a temperature like 26 degrees Celsius, the density of water at a warmer temperature is actually going to go down, which would impact our variable. So let's go ahead and peel away and see just how much more dense water is than air at sea level in a pool that's 26 degrees Celsius, and this is the density of water, and the resulting math comes out to 813 times. So water is 813 times more dense than air in the neutral environment. It's not quite 800, but it definitely is not 800. Now let's keep making this a little bit more interesting. Let's say we're swimming in seawater. This is my beautiful graph representation of seawater. Here, depending on the substances in the water, how much salt it is and all the other good stuff that's floating around in the water, the density of water is anywhere from 1.02 to 1.029. And remember our units on this, we're measuring this in grams per milliliter. So if we peel back the layers, how much more dense is water? And in seawater at least, water is 836 times more dense than air. It's not 800, but we're starting to drift further and further away from that 800 number where it is a generalization, but it starts to get really interesting when you get up to altitude. Now remember, air and the variables here are depth. So in air, that's pressure, air pressure. So if you increase altitude and you were to go to like a training camp, like the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs that sits at 1,935 meters, that's about 6,200 feet. Over there, let's assume an air temperature of 24 degrees Celsius. That's about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. We got a beautiful facility. At that altitude, the air density is 0.0006836. Now let's compare the air density at the Olympic Training Center compared to sea level. And if you notice, it's a lot different. It's actually about half. So if you were to take the water density and divide it by this number, 
then the water at the Olympic Training Center is actually 1,498.68 times as dense as air. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because the air density is a lot less. There's less air to breathe when you're in altitude, and that's what makes training so much harder. So if you were to compare relatively, water at the Olympic Training Center at altitude at about 1,935 meters is almost 1,500 times more dense than air because the air is really thin. Makes a lot of sense. Now, just for kicks and giggles, I wanted to see, well, you know what? Let's go to the highest point on the planet, and that is the top of Mount Everest, where we are at 8,848 meters high. For the US folks, it's about 29,000 feet, 29,032 to be exact. And at that altitude, we're not talking about normal temperatures anymore. We gotta factor that in for air density, and the temperature is negative 30 degrees Celsius, or about negative 23 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you were to hypothetically have a swimming pool at that level, the air density is 0.0001162. It's basically like one fifth the air density at the Olympic Training Center, which is much, much lower, but still pretty high. So the density of water at the top of Mount Everest, imagine a swimming pool at the top of Mount Everest, the density of water at the top of Mount Everest is 8,816 times more dense than air. That's pretty insane. Just imagine a swimming pool at the top. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big like. And if you're not in our private Facebook group, this is like our VIP Facebook group. I'm so happy if you're watching this at the end of the video because you're gonna get exclusive access to this. Check it out, link in the description. I'm in there, you should be in there. We have swimmers from all over the world. You can request to join. Let them know that I sent you from YouTube. Wish you the best, happy swimming, and have a great day.